Most of you will have a display on your VCR. If you select to show the display, you'll see the control track. This is farther than six minutes and 27 seconds on the tape. It's a lot farther than that and probably like an hour. All you have to do though is rewind the tape, take the tape out, eject it, pop it back in, and then hit the display. It should zero out. Then you fast forward it. When the control track stops, it could be 45 minutes or it could be an hour and 45 minutes. You just have to know to be back within 45 minutes or an hour and 45 minutes. That's all there is to it. It's that simple. You don't have to watch the whole videotape being recorded. Now, if you watch the computer screen, you're seeing black flashes, and that's because I've got the VCR connected to the Intensity Shuttle. The Intensity Shuttle cannot capture old, worn-out VHS tapes unless you have a time-based corrector, otherwise known as a TBC. I'm going to let people see that this is connected to the Intensity Shuttle because I'm going to unplug it right now. We see there is no signal. So I connect it in here. If I power this on, the in the Canopus ADVC 110 is the input is coming from the VCR and the output is going to this monitor. This is the Roxy Music videotape. It's not showing on the Premiere Pro interface right now or GUI, I guess you could call it, because I haven't set it up to do it. And I'm going to start from scratch really quick so people can see that you go to File, you go to where it says Capture, then you're going to go over to where it says Settings you're gonna see edit. Now you can select the black magic capture device, which is what it was capturing from. Now we're gonna to go to DV. There is some settings that we can opt for, but I'm just gonna click out of those really quick. If we go to where it says device control, it's still set at black magic device control. For these two type of devices, it really doesn't matter, but I am gonna switch it to DV, HDV, where it says option. I'm going to make sure that it says, oh, the option came way over there. For the option, it said at NTSC, Canopus ADVC1, 10 drop frame. That's okay, that'll work out just fine the way it is. I can get rid of the display by selecting on here because once you get the, uh, whoops, let me go back and I hit it one too many times. There we go. Once you get the total runtime of the control track, and you rewind it you know to start recording you want to make sure you disable that display you don't want it on when you're recording it for your clients or for friends and family and that's all there really is to capturing vhs tape using you know a generic vcr in the advc 110 to do the actual capture you just hit this capture button here i'm not going to capture any more than about 10 seconds worth so I might as well just hit stop right now. This is just for demonstration purposes. I'm gonna, I guess, call it VHS001 for right now. That'll be good enough. I'll capture a few more seconds. Nothing is gonna really change from the last time I captured, but it is nice to see the VCR or the VHS tape on this NTSC monitor. I'll hit stop. It already says VHS002. It, it logs itself with the appropriate ending. So I'll click out of this really quick. We don't need it anymore. I'm going to hit this to digital because I'm going to drop these two clips into the timeline. And now we can play back what we just captured to the NTSC monitor. The video's really cleaned up now. There's no wiggling in it or anything. That's what the Canopus ADVC 110 will do. A lot of these cheap USB capture devices will not allow you to output the timeline to an NTSC compliant, you know, broadcast compliant monitor. So that's one huge advantage of the Canopus ADVC 110 versus these cheap, inexpensive USB capture devices. The Canopus ADVC110 is a generic FireWire DV converter. There's other manufacturers that used to make similar products to the Canopus ADVC110. About five years ago, a lot of the companies stopped making the FireWire DV converters. You can buy them used from eBay as well as Craigslist. Obviously, in order to use the FireWire-based DV converters, 
you need a FireWire port on your computer. A lot of the computers within the last seven to eight years do not have a FireWire port. Having said that, in the year 2019, a lot of computers and laptops do have Thunderbolt 3 ports. You can get adapters from Thunderbolt to FireWire. I want to go into where it says edit. I want to go into preferences and for playback, I want to switch from the Adobe desktop video and the Adobe DV. With Adobe DV, it'll, it, the output of the timeline will come out any type of DV device. You wouldn't have to have the Canopus ADV C110, just any FireWire based DV converter would work. But I don't want this Adobe DV selected. I want to go to the Blackmagic Design app setting. I also want to, where it says Blackmagic Design here, select Blackmagic Design. Now when I hit OK, now I'm outputting through the intensity shuttle. That's why you don't see the image on here anymore. And the real cool thing about the Blackmagic Design intensity shuttle is that I can show the client exactly what the DVD or Blu-ray will look like. This will allow me to output to a standard definition monitor. I can do that with the intensity shuttle. I don't have it hooked up though right now. Like I said, this Canopus ADVC 110 was hooked up to this broadcast compliant monitor. The intensity shuttle is hooked up to that. And I can give the client previews. For example, how I've got this stretched out 304%. If I go to 100%, the image will look really crisp and clean, but look how small that is. If you had like a 60 inch HD monitor, people would have to move their chairs four or five, maybe six foot closer to the screen. What we can do is zoom out like 70 or 80% where we still get a pretty crisp, clean image. But as you can tell, it doesn't take up the full screen. If I'm burning to a Blu-ray disc, as you could tell, using the intensity shuttle allows me to give the client a spot-on representation of what the DVD or Blu-ray will look like, whichever they have me opt for. If I'm outputting to social media like Facebook or YouTube, it's easy to do. I just go over to the menu bar where it says File. I scroll down to Export. I select Media. Where the Video tab is, you can decide if you want to have progressive or interlaced. This would depend on, like I said, if you're burning an interlaced Blu-ray disc or are you output into social media. But that's all there is to it when I'm editing for a client. I use the intensity shuttle so I can get really good real-time previews. And then when I got to export to Facebook or YouTube for the client, I opt for progressive at 59.94 frames per second. And then I just hit export. Premiere Pro does what it needs to do to give a really clean image. It doesn't have interlacing artifacts on it at all. I don't recommend the DV FireWire converters because I think they have the best image quality. I recommend them because the image quality is good compared to a lot of the cheap and expensive USB capture devices. Some of the USB capture devices, the blacks will be really super crushed. So everything is just super dark. There's no levels of gray and also some of them when it comes to the whites the whites are just super blown out i also want to say that a lot of the usb capture devices require a driver some capture devices will work with windows 7 and windows 8 but it won't work with windows 10 or windows vista where the dv converters whether you're on mac or pc they don't require any drivers with the dv converters if you capture with premiere pro you can take those video files and bring them into Avid, or if you captured with the Avid software, you could bring those files into Premiere Pro. It's pretty generic. A lot of the nonlinear editing systems will be able to capture and play back the mini DV codec, which is basically what these DV converters are capturing into. If you do use the cheap USB capture devices, sometimes the image quality can be good, but if you bring those video files into Final Cut Pro 10, DaVinci Resolve, or Premiere Pro, the audio might be out of sync, the audio might be distorted, or the video will have flashes of green every other frame. That's why I recommend these DV converters. They're pretty easy to use and they're pretty universal between other nonlinear editing systems and other operating systems.